Well, today's learning together, today's learning together comes with a content warning. Uh, if you are if you are 12 years of age or under, you're good. This is going to be great. You're going to love it. If you're older, um, I, I sometimes talk about God and, and Jesus and today the Holy Spirit uh, in a way that's very sort of familiar, uh, maybe even just a little bit uh, irreverent sometimes. And um, uh, so, some people uh, might hear that as being uh, a little bit uh, disrespectful or uh, even <gasps> sacrilegious. Um, but, but hear me out here. Um, I, I grew up with, I grew up with the Almighty God and Great Lord, um, who was uh, all powerful but quite distant. A- and over time, I've come to know God a little bit differently. I've come to know God a little bit more intimately, a little bit uh, closer. And uh, so I, I talk about God uh, a little bit more like a friend or a companion, a mentor, um, because that's how I know God. And, and if you know God differently, um, you might hear me sound a little bit, perhaps a little bit, you know, irreverent sometimes. Uh, and, and I don't mean to be, it's just how I know God. And so today, uh, I'm going to talk about the Holy Spirit. Um, and, and that actually, that story I just told is, is actually the thing about the Holy Spirit for me is, when, when I was a kid, um, the Holy Spirit was scary. It was that thing that came in wind and fire and stuff, and, and it did stuff to you. Uh, the fact that we called it, in those days, we called it the Holy Ghost was not really helpful either, I got to say, if you're a kid. Um, but, but, see, what I've come to understand a little bit differently, I think, is the Holy Spirit is the power of God at work, right? God is love. Uh, Jesus shows us. Jesus is the example of love. And then the Spirit is love actually at work. It's, it's, the, it's the thing that inspires you to love. And I think the best way to understand that when you hear the story about the rushing wind, um, the spirit in the wind, um, and, and we have other images for the spirit, right? Like water and fire and stuff. But when you hear about the spirit in the wind, take a breath and then breathe it out again. That's the power of the spirit right there. The breath of God is in you. And when we breathe, we are enacting the breath of God. That it animates us is the Holy Spirit at work. And, and sometimes how it animates us, sometimes it's, it's a challenge. It's difficult. It's a struggle. We, we're not sure what to do. But we hear that little voice, there's the Holy Spirit prodding us. Take a breath. Take a step forward. You can do it. Sometimes it's hard. And so I want to tell a story today that's a little bit about that. That sometimes, sometimes in order to see the good, you kind of have to get past that little bit that's a struggle. So today, I've got a story about Walter the farting dog. I just said fart. Yes, I did. I'm not meaning to be disrespectful, but we all do it. So the story is called Walter the Fart, and I happen to have, thanks to Dwayne and Fern, and this is about to get the attention of the puppies here, but I happen to have a Walter, and yes, yes, he does. And see how that gets the attention. That certainly gets the attention of Chewbacca here, who's very interested and Yoda is too. Um, so, before they get too interested and we lose track of Walter, here's the story of how the family came to have Walter in their life. Here we go. This is the story of Walter the Farting Dog. Betty and Billy brought Walter home from the dog pound. 
Nobody wanted him, said Billy. But we love him, said Betty. Well, he smells awful, said their mother. I think you'd better give him a bath. Mother walked in and said, he still smells awful. That's when they got the first clue, the telltale bubbles in the water. He's probably just a little nervous, said Mother, hopefully. His stomach must be upset. But Walter's stomach wasn't upset. Walter's stomach was fine. He felt perfectly normal. He just farted a lot. He did it when he bathed. He did it when he played with Betty and Billy. He did it when he walked around the house. He did it in the dining room. He did it in the kitchen. And he did it in his sleep. That dog farts morning, noon, and night, said Father. He can't help it, Daddy, said Betty and Billy. They didn't mind Walter's farts. So what if he farts, Billy said to Betty when they were alone in their room with Walter. Betty agreed. Walter agreed, too. He sat there looking innocently around, farting. Take him to the vet, said Father. Farting, said the vet, or rectal flatulence, as we say in the medical profession, and prescribed a change in diet. They gave Walter every kind of dog food. He farted. They tried him on cat food. They gave him hot dogs, hamburgers, and lettuce, and tomato sandwiches. He farted. They gave him fried chicken. They gave him rabbit food. They made him a vegetarian. No matter what that dog eats, he turns it into farts, roared Father. Walter got the blame for everybody else's farts, too. If Uncle Irv let one slip, he just went and stood near Walter. Then all he had to say was, Walter, and everyone would look at poor Walter. He has to go back to the pound, said Father. No, Daddy, please, begged Betty and Billy. Don't send Walter away. He goes tomorrow, said Father. They pleaded. Walter farted. It was all over. That night, Betty and Billy cried in their beds, and Walter looked at them unhappily. Oh, Walter, said Betty, you've got to stop farting. Because Father is going to send you back to the pound tomorrow, said Billy. Walter knew how serious the situation was. He'd never seen Betty and Billy again. He resolved to hold in his farts forever. When Betty and Billy fell asleep, he walked down to the kitchen to see if there was anything around to eat. He managed to open the cupboard door with his nose and found the 25-pound bag of low-fart dog biscuits the vet had prescribed for him, which had made him fart even more. Even though he knew they made him fart more, he couldn't resist. He ate the entire bag. Very tasty, said Walter to himself. And then he went and lay down on the sofa. A gigantic gas bubble began to build inside him. This is going to be trouble, he said to himself nervously. He was afraid of what might happen if he let it go. He thought maybe the house would explode, so he kept it in. It wasn't easy. In fact, it was torture. But he had resolved never to fart again. His future depended on it. As he lay there, with his tail wrapped tightly between his legs, he heard a noise at the window. He watched it slowly open. A pair of burglars came through. They dropped silently into the kitchen. Watch out for the dog, said one of the burglars. He won't bite, said the other. He's a wimp. Walter might have bitten them, except he was so filled with gas he couldn't move. They tied a rag around his snout so he couldn't bark. Okay, whispered the first burglar. Let's clear the place out. They took everything they could get their hands on. Walter wanted to stop them, but he was having unbearable gas pains. He rolled on his back and waved his paws in the air. He gnashed his teeth. We've got it all, said the second burglar. Let's go. That's when Walter let fly. It was the worst fart of his life. It made a tremendous noise and shot him across the room. A hideous cloud filled the air. 
The burglars clutched their throats, unable to breathe. With tears in their eyes, they raced for the window. They tried to grab their bag with all the valuables in it, but their arms were too weak. Let's get out of here! They jumped out the window and ran up the block, choking and gasping for air. Still blinded by Walter's attack, they stepped into the headlights of an approaching police car. Hold it right there, said the policeman. When father and mother came down in the morning, they found the open window, and they saw the bag with their valuables in it, and Walter was sitting beside it. He still had the rag tied around his snout. You'd have to say he looked heroic. He saved the silverware, cried mother. He saved the DVD player, cried father. Good dog, Walter. You're our dog, even if you do fart all the time. And so the family learned to live with Walter, the hero dog. And that's the end of our tale. Well, Walter found a home. Mm, despite his smell, he found a home. Because his family recognized what a great, great dog he was and what a great heart he had. Even if other parts didn't work properly all the time. The point is that sometimes the Spirit moves us in a way that we kind of have to struggle with sometimes. And sometimes it's really obvious. But the Spirit is there. The Spirit is in us. And we can't keep it in. We have to let it out. And when we let it out, we can do great and amazing things. <laughs>